All right, here we go. My name is Kevin. I work for Bendix. I'm a field service tech. I uh, do some training and then uh, troubleshooting for uh, air brake systems. So what we're going to talk about is um, brake adjustment. I know it's a simple, common, everyday thing, but some of the steps are missed. So we're going to talk about that in the beginning. The first step we're going to talk about is your clevis pin placement. Usually when you get trucks, they're already all set up. You don't have to worry about them too much. But if you change air brake chambers or somebody on the road has changed a chamber, and you start having some brake issues, some adjustment issues and stuff, first thing you want to check is the air brake clevis placement. Now with a threaded push rod placement, you need a, the air brake measurement to be from the face of the chamber to the center of the clevis pin. Again, from the face of the chamber to the center of the clevis pin. That measurement for a threaded push rod on trucks, on tractors and trucks, is two and five eighths of an inch, plus or minus an eighth. If you have, like the newer chambers that come out now, the clevis pins are all welded on, they're welded at two and a quarter, okay? And the reason why the difference is is because the welded clevises are that way. You can't do that with a threaded push rod because if you do cut it at two and a quarter, your jam nut right here will actually run into the back of the chamber and will not let the brake fully release, okay? So if you're gonna go ahead and replace a chamber and you have welded clevis pins, best thing to do is get a chamber with a welded clevis pin, all right? Does it make a big difference if you put one on that's two and five eighths and your other ones are welded clevises? not right at the beginning, but as your brakes wear down, your brake stroke and your brake force gets a little bit less. Is it a whole lot? Not, a, it's probably about two to 5% difference from side to side if you have them that way. So we always recommend that you replace with the same thing that is on there, all right? So with that being said, again, clevis pin placement for threaded rod, two and five eighths from the face of the chamber to the center of the clevis pin. And of course, with the uh, welded rods, uh, with the welded clevises, it's already set at two and a quarter. You can't adjust them. All right. And I show the same thing here, just in case you was looking. That's measurement A, proper clevis pin placement. The second thing we're going to do, after we make sure that everything's done that way and everything's all up into shape, second thing we're going to do is measurement B, which is free stroke. Free stroke is make sure that you have your parking brakes released, your tires all blocked up so it doesn't run you over as you're laying underneath it. But free stroke, we measure, we take all of our measurements from the same, from the face of the chamber to the center of the clevis pin. What we do then is we take a pry bar, put our uh, measurement up there, and we pry against it until the, we pry it until the brake drums or the shoes press up against the brake drum. You can't push it anymore. It doesn't mean you have to put a lot of muscle to it just until they make contact. You take that measurement. So you take measurement B, you take A minus B, that'll give you your free play, all right? Free play is between 3 eighths of an inch to 5 eighths of an inch. 3 eighths to 5 eighths. All this information is on our website in our manuals. It's also the same thing that, uh, that uh, the uh, Truck Maintenance Council follows, CVSA, all them guys, all right? So once we get that measurement and we're good with it all the way around, Every, everything should be the same, left to right, front to rear. It should be between 3 eighths and 5 eighths. So if you got them, they're all half inch, you got good, good, good uh, you know, measurements. If you have one that's different, so you got one that you got them at two and, two and a half, and the other one maybe two and 5 eighths, maybe two and 3 quarters, take a look at the brakes, see what's wrong with them. Maybe you have uh, loose bushings, you know, uh, you know, bat, no rollers, the springs are, are, are off or something. So we take a maintenance and look at that. Once we get done with that part, and we're happy with that, everything's all measured properly, then we go to what we call power stroke. Power stroke is measurement C. And the reason why I have ABC is because in our manuals, they're, they're called out as ABC. Once you go and you have, and then you take your power stroke, your power stroke bleeds your trucks down to between 90 and 100 PSI, all right? And then put a full brake apply on them with your parking brakes released. Full brake apply, and then take your measurement, again, from the face of the chamber to the center of the clevis pin. All right, that, that measurement is dependent on the type of chamber you have on. Type 24, type 20, type 30, type 30 long stroke, you know, type 30 standard stroke chambers. All that measurements are different. And th all that information is in our manual. Our manual is BW7258. You can get that online, bendix.com in the literature center. You can download that, it's a PDF. All right, so again, we measure our power stroke between 90 and 100 PSI. If there's only you, Take your truck down to there, take a piece of block, block of wood, block your brake pedal in against your seat, go back down and measure them. All right, the other way that you can measure them when you're down underneath and you're measuring, and you got everything else all measured, you can actually go down, take a piece of chalk, mark the chamber rod. That's what DOT is gonna do. 
they're going to mark the chamber rod, then they're going to have you apply the brake, full, full brake application, then they're going to measure the face of the chamber to the mark on the rod. Again, still has to be type 30s, type 30 chambers, the maximum stroke it can be is two inches. If it's more than two inches, you're going to be out of service. I know that last year, last year, all the uh, out of service criteria for a lot of the brakes, about 15 to 20% of them were brake adjustments. Okay, they were out of brake adjustment. And there's multiple ways that this could be out of adjustment. You either don't have an adjuster that's operating properly, you got maybe a broken drum, bad bushings in your cam tubes, you know, uh, rollers are bad, brake shoes are wore out, I mean, you know, missing parts, missing lining blocks on your brake shoe, there's just, just multiple things that you have to actually inspect. You have to become, a, you know, an inspector. Take a look at that. If, you, if they all don't match and you really want all your measurements to match, wheel in to wheel in. So if you go power stroke and you got that an inch and a half, you want all your wheel ins to be inch and a half plus or minus an eighth of an inch. Okay? That way there you have balanced braking. If you have one that's an inch and a half and one at two inches, the inch and a half brake is going to apply first and you're going to get a brake pull possibly. So, you know, as, as we do that, that's what we think about. Now, do we have to go and measure the clevis pin placement and all that to do a brake job? Once you measured that, and on your, on, on, on your normal maintenance, you don't have to measure that again unless you've changed the parts, all right? But do measure your power strokes. And the reason why I tell you to measure it with a tape measure is because that's what DOT does. I understand that we can, you know, we can adjust them up until they make contact, back them off a half a turn, say they're all good, all right? But DOT doesn't look at that. They look at the measurement. That's the reason why I always tell you to measure them. That way there, you know what you have. You're not, get, you know, you're not saying, I know it's good, all right? Because when DOT crawls underneath there, and it's not within spec, he's not going to be a happy camper, and neither are you, OK? So with that, with that being said, as, as we talk about this in a little bit in the maintenance side, always make sure that your clevis pins can turn in the slack adjuster and, the, and in the clevis. If they don't turn, that means they're frozen up. So as they apply, what it does is it starts binding. It's not a clean stroke. If you don't have a clean stroke, you got less brake force. So always when you're, when you're down there and you're greasing or something, take and make sure that they spin, you know, with a finger or just, you know, a pair of pliers that you can get a hold of them and spin them. Make sure that they are free, free and loose. If they're not, knock them out, clean them up, put new ones in. Make sure that the uh, bushings and stuff in the slack adjuster arm is good put them back together. Put a little bit of lube on there and put them back together. Okay? So with that being said, who, who knows the difference between a long stroke and a standard stroke chamber? If you was to look at a long stroke chamber and a standard stroke, do you know the difference? Hey, answer out. I'll, I'll take anybody's. Oh, come on. All right. I'm going to answer the question then. Don't be afraid. Don't be shy up here. Long stroke chambers, type 30s, 3030s, if you look at them, the boss where the airline's hooked to are square. On a standard stroke, the boss is round on a type 3030 chamber. All right? All long stroke chambers on type 30s are all have square po ports on them. Okay? You also read on the ring, it'll tell you long stroke, and it'll give you a maximum stroke of like three inches. All right, now that's the maximum stroke that that chamber can be pushed, okay? That's not maximum measured stroke or brake apply stroke. That's maximum stroke of that chamber. So on type 30 long stroke, we actually have a little chart here. On a type 30 long stroke, you can go two, uh, two and a half inches, okay? Now remember, on the chamber it says three inches. That means that chamber can reach its maximum stroke of three inches. But legally, it can only go two and a half inches according to DOT. So it gives you a half inch more stroke in a leeway. So if you're in a mountain descent or something, gives you a little more break, okay? Gives you a little more stroke. On type 24s or on steer axle chambers like this, you see the ports are round. All the ports are always round except for the extended long stroke. But with these being round ports, if it is a long stroke chamber, there's a little plastic tag on there, like a triangle shaped tag. On there, it'll tell you a long stroke, and it'll also tell you the maximum stroke of that. So it may be a type 24 chamber with a three inch stroke, or a two and a half inch stroke, okay? And it's blue. Sometimes they're orange, but you are correct, all right? 
So, but they, but they are round ports. So, you know, the, the total thing about long stroke and standard stroke being square and round are, is only true basically on, on the type 30 chambers. Except for one chamber, type 24s, extra long stroke, all right? They, they are a three inch stroke type 24 chamber. And it tells you on a tag or it tells you someplace on this chamber what it is. The top port is square. The face port is round. These are important things. Are you allowed, if you change chambers, to have a standard stroke on your left, ax on your left wheel and a long stroke on the right wheel? This gentleman says no. Is that true? Everybody confirmed him? I agree with him. You cannot. The reason is is because you have different stroke. You have different brake application for that. All right? So if you have a long stroke on the right side, you've got to have a long stroke on the left side. Okay?